Have a little patience with yourself because the more you work on painting water, the better you're gonna get. So like you working on this right now means you're developing your ability to paint water. It may not look perfect right now, and that might be frustrating, but you are putting in the hours at this moment to be able to get to where you wanna be. So don't give up, okay? Stick with me here for this one if you can. I've gotten a couple requests to do an acrylic painting tutorial of rocks in water, like a transparent water effect, rocks beneath the water and some shinies on top. It's kind of a complicated subject matter and I usually do it in oils. I'm gonna try and simplify this. I'm gonna try and make this tutorial accessible to someone who's never tried this subject matter before. It's gonna look kind of like this based on not like a real reference photo, but based on a couple sketches that I've done. I'm taking all of these elements and I'm kind of putting them together into this image, showing you how I approach a painting like this. This is kind of like an imagination painting for me. I didn't really look at a photo to come up with this composition and color and concept. I looked at a bunch of stuff to make it together to try and create an image that's doable. So we're going to see what we can do. I actually have pre primed this little board here with some radioactive snot green. You may be like, what on earth is that about? But I want some of these really vibrant colors of this green to come through in our painting. So if I start with this ground color of a super vibrant green, I've got my little board. I've got a little palette paper and board that I've taped on there to mix on. I've got a whole bunch of brushes. I'm gonna have some ultramarine, lots of ultramarine. Cerulean blue, cadmium yellow medium hue, a little, little bit of, oh dear, this red, and definitely some white. I also might bring in some of this bright aqua green, but I'm gonna hold off on it for right now because it's kind of a, a drippy paint and we're gonna start with these colors. So what I wanna do first when I'm approaching this painting is sketch out all of my rocks and I'm gonna do that with a darkish green. Add a little bit of water in there so it's gonna flow kind of nice on my paintbrush and I'm looking at my sketch, I'm looking at my board and I'm going to draw in the basic shapes starting with this rock here. Now as we get to the back, that's where our little waves are gonna be, so we're not gonna be seeing as much of the rocks. So I'm not worried about drawing any further up. I'm mixing up again a little more of this color using mostly my cerulean blue, but darkening a little bit with my ultramarine and adding a little bit of my yellow so I can draw out a little bit more accurately. I'm gonna start actually blocking a little bit of this color in. So the way I'm approaching this is having some fairly transparent layers. And that way I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have the ability to have some of this color behind each layer come through. I'm gonna cover up a lot of this upper part with a blue with a little bit of white in it. You know, you're looking at this and you're being like that. Oy. Oh boy. She's a mess, this is a mess. What is she doing? <laughs> you'll see, you'll see, if you trust me. We can get something cool going on here. So let's go back to that littler brush and draw back in our lines. See, I also decided that I think I drew these ones a little too dark, those outlines. I want them to be a little lighter. They're just a little bit too dark. All these shadowed areas. So I'm drawing in those shadows, almost like outlines a little bit on these rocks. And they look like outlines because those shadows are so dark. 
and you can see these rocks starting to form. They're not looking as much like weird ovals. They're starting to actually take shape here. So I'm gonna bring up some of this darkness, but we're not gonna be seeing much of it. It's just to give us some texture up here to work on top of. So while we're here, and we've got our rocks really defined, let's get our wavy areas pretty defined too. So we're gonna take some white and some light blue, just like that. I'm gonna have a decent amount of water on here, not too much. I don't want the water to really wildly dilute down the paint, but I wanna get a little bit of transparency here. And I'm taking this flat filbert brush. There's not that much paint on here. I'm going to sketch in some of these waves really lightly and really loosely. So I'm, I'm using this as a reference photo, but I'm also like just going to put these little wiggles wherever I feel like. All you need is some little waves that are curving around. Getting these little wiggles. I'm leaving some of the dark spaces open because I want to have some of that transparency for us to see through to the water. These highlights are what we're seeing reflected from the sky. So this light blue we have here is our sky color. Now we're gonna work on adding some more color and depth to our rocks. I'm gonna take a slightly bigger brush here. Now I'm gonna mix up a greeny blue, cerulean, a little bit of this yellow, and block that on. I'll also start building up the shadow and the highlight on top this. Bring in some of this color up here to these parts I know are going to be a little bit darker. We're going to be seeing transparently through our water. Darken this up with a little bit of our ultramarine. Grab some of the blue shadow around the edges. I'm going to come in and define our darkest, darkest shadow a little bit later, but I really like this blue. I think I went a little too muted here. I want to bring the saturation up in this photo. Photo. <laughs> Let's bring back a little more of that darkness in our darkest shadows. I'm actually gonna do a little bit here where there's some streaks from our wave. We can kind of use those to reflect a little bit of the light here. Because this is a beginner painting, fairly beginner, I'm not worried about focusing on refracted light too much. I just kind of want to, and like how the water changes how we view the rocks underneath it. But since we're here and early, let's add a little bit of, a little bit of wiggle. How about some highlights on those rocks? This is what I'm going to bring out this beautiful aqua, ooh, I gotta shake it. Oh no, it came out horrible. That's more like it, that looks correct. I'm using just the tip, scrubbing it around, letting some of the spaces stay open to make it look like these rocks have texture to them. Let's go even lighter. I want to bring this color into the background too. 
It's definitely a color that we're gonna be seeing through all of our reflections. So let's go back and work on more of those waves while we're, have gotten the bulk of those rocks done. Well, maybe I'm gonna add a little more highlight. Just a little, just a little. And now we're gonna go back, look a little more on the waves. So I'm using my white and my cerulean, mixing those up together with some water so we can keep it pretty transparent. And these areas we'd originally drawn out for our waves and I'm also adding some transparency over the rocks we've painted. We stuck with a darker blue. It's not a dark blue, it's still a light blue, but it's dark blue so that we can add highlights on top and think about where our light source is. So I've got all these different little curves for my wave. And I wanna go down with a slightly smaller brush, add a little more white to my light blue and adding some more detail and light to the waves. And what I'm doing is every time there's a little V or like a little peak there, I'm putting more highlight on the right side. And that way we can have this idea that the light's coming in from here and not hitting the side that's in the back as much. And then I'm letting it taper out once it gets to another part of a, a V, a little peak, and doing the highlight again. You can kind of see now how the highlights on this water are starting to form. And a little more brightness to my highlights and some of these. And there is here and even a little bit on the other side just to give it some texture. Adding just a little bit more white here for another little highlight layer, just to get this water shining all pretty. I'm gonna switch down to a little bit of a pointier brush. A little more water added in. I'm liking how that water is starting to look, so I wanna go now and create those really pretty reflections, those like kaleidoscope light colors that are gonna go on our rocks. So to do that, I'm gonna use some really pretty aqua teal and some blue. If you don't have this aqua teal, don't worry about it. Just use some blue with a tiny little bit of yellow put in and maybe some white. You'll get a similar color. I just happen to have this color on hand so it's nice for me to use, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. And we're going to use a thin pointy brush to start drawing loosely, sketchy, the reflections. I'm using that wiggly side to side effect, especially where our little waves are, because that's where the, the water is like crinkled almost, and we're seeing it like weird mirrors <laughs> different directions. Water is weird and complicated. You gotta spend a lot of time with water to start really understanding it. It's really hard for me to put into words 
what I'm doing when I'm painting water. I'm just kind of feeling it, honestly. It's weird. And in these areas back here where we're seeing through the reflections still into the water, the follow through of some of that light coming through. We can now go in with a slightly smaller brush. So I'm using a little bit of my aqua and yellow, but you can just use yellow and blue and just go super heavy on the yellow to get this green. Now we're gonna go even lighter. Get some really vibrant yellows. I'm being not too picky about where these lines are going. I'm trying to keep them flexing with the curves of the rocks and building on top of the other wiggly parts I have here. That brings some of this yellow back into here, just a little bit. We've got a little bit of that you know, like coming through, like those rocks are still extending back. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of almost an orange, a little bit of this red, just a tiny, tiny bit. It's like the only time I'm using this red almost. And yellow, get this orangey color here. I'm gonna use that very sparingly, but in a couple places where those, those Lines connect. A little bit extra light, just sparkling on those rocks, little pinpoints of light that are just coming through extra bright. I think I'm gonna define a little bit more texture. Taking my cerulean, a little bit of my yellow and and just little, little tiny scrapes of a little bit extra texture on some of these rocks to give them a, just a bitty baby bit more of a curved look. Like some of them are starting to look a little bit flat. And I want to pull this color into the background. I'm going to add a little more light blue to the highlights of the water just a moment before I put on the extra sparkles. Now, very fun part, we're gonna add some pure white little sparkles. I want them to sit where the highlighted parts of the water are and kind of come down at a diagonal angle and give it a little more dynamic appeal. So let's add one here. I'm gonna keep them fairly small and get even smaller as we move back, honestly. Mostly coming down the center, but a couple on the edges. I'm actually going to switch to my smaller brush to do some tiny, tiny little sparkle work. Any bitty. Our sparkles are going to be a little more concentrated in the back and a little more spread out as we get closer to the front. But you can go a little crazier in the back. Real quick, I want to go back in little more shadow on our rocks. Let's see if I can darken these just a little bit more. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of red to mute it, see if that darkens it. And really define those dark areas. Adding a little more detail to the part you can see through. Maybe a couple more areas of shadow. I think I'm gonna call that done. As per usual, I prefer my sketch to the actual finished painting. Actually, wait, hold on, hold on. I always do this. I'm like, I'm done. I'm not. 
I want to add a little more transparent color to show these waves. Okay, now that can be done. Hopefully this was pretty doable. If you have any questions about this, this is a little bit of a tricky piece. Let me know in the comments below. If you want the full version of this tutorial, again, it's gonna be on Patreon for my sweet community there. If you have any suggestions for tutorials or things you wanna learn how to paint, let me know. Any questions at all, let me know. Let me know what you need. And I think that's it, and I'll see you in the next video.